Hey everybody, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make something that has changed my freeze drying experiences forever. Because today we're gonna to freeze dry some oranges and we're gonna freeze dry some lemons. We're going to powder both of these. We're going to juice both of these and then rehydrate. We're gonna do some slices and we're also gonna do some uh, freeze dried orange zest and some freeze dried lemon zest, which has just changed my uh, culinary experiences altogether. So to fill up these first two trays, um, I'm, I'm putting our pre-cut parchment down because I'm just gonna do some, uh, some lemon slices and some orange slices. And when you're doing any kind of fruit or vegetable that has a skin on it that you've purchased from the store, you always wanna try and go, go organic uh, just because the stuff that is sprayed onto the skin or uh, really scrub these things good and try and get all that uh, nasty stuff off there. And another thing that I oftentimes forget to mention with this parchment too, is you can, if you have room and it will fit in that shelf, you can actually layer the parchment and kind of get more bang for your buck. You have to be a little bit careful because if you make it too thick and not breathable enough, it's gonna really extend your cycle time. Um, in this case, our orange and our lemon slices are cut pretty thin, but on top we're actually gonna add our extra lemon peels and our extra orange peels. I'd like to see if we can figure something to do with those. I really like to utilize everything if we possibly can. And speaking of that, most people do not use the peel of a lemon or an orange, but we have discovered in the last few months, we've been cooking with zest a lot and it has just completely changed some of the recipes that we use it for. It adds so much flavor, even just a little pinch like that makes such a huge difference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze dry some orange and some lemon zest because we've been using this so much that it would, it's really just become kind of just a, a spice that we could use just like, uh, just like we do a lot of things in the kitchen. So there's that. I'm just gonna add this onto this top tray. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch because I wanna make sure that it's gonna work. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Now for our third tray, I'm just gonna do pieces of our oranges and our lemons. All right, our last two trays are reserved for some homemade orange juice and some homemade lemonade. And I'm actually gonna use the Vitamix. You can use a regular blender as well. The Vitamix, um, it will kind of grind up all of that pulp and all that stuff. It also allows you to put some of the parts and pieces that are uh, pretty difficult to get with a, a, a regular blender. So the first thing we need to do to these oranges, we need to take the skins off. I like to just take the ends off like that. And then we're just gonna slowly take all of that skin off the outside. Just like that, it's not that big a deal if you leave some of that white pith part on there. Um, that can actually just go right into the Vitamix. So two oranges, we're gonna add half a cup of water. And then 30 seconds later, you have fresh orange juice. I'm going onto our silicone mats from freeze drying supplies. It looks like I'm probably gonna have to double, maybe triple this recipe to fit on a large tray. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I think this is probably full enough for this experiment at least. I used four oranges and half a cup of water in the Vitamix. That could all be done in one little, uh, one mixing. I don't really wanna push it any farther than that. I have heard people have issues with orange juice where they have to water it down because it's sugary, but this is homemade orange juice. I don't think it should be as big of a problem, maybe not even a problem at all. Let's move on to our lemonade. And this is where things are gonna get interesting because Obviously lemons are extremely sour and we know sugar doesn't do well in the freeze dryer. So what I've used in the past is stevia. Stevia is a plant, it grows in the ground. And you can also grow stevia and I've grown it in the past. I had every intention of actually growing some this summer and freeze drying the leaf itself uh, to make my own stevia that you can, just like what you can buy at the store, but it would be uh, organic and homegrown but my stevia plants just did not grow this summer. So here we go, here's, here's the box. There's lots of different companies that make this, but this is what we're gonna use. So what we're gonna do is just take the end off of these lemons. 
You're going to cut it lengthwise and then we're going to quarter them. And really what you're trying to do is take the pith out, which is this white spot. That's also where the seeds are usually at. So you want to take those out as well. And we're going to do that with two lemons. And then for this next part, brace yourselves. We're going into the Vitamix with the whole wedge. That's right. Everything. And then we're going to add five cups of water and 12 teaspoons of stevia. If anyone has freeze dried stevia, let me know down in the comments section. I'd love to hear about it. And what you end up with is real lemonade. And that recipe that I just gave you should do two large trays. So normally I would pre-freeze my trays, especially liquids. Today I'm not going to, uh, I'm just gonna go right into the freeze dryer with them. I am gonna try my dividers though because I think it would be cool to have a portion uh, that you could just rehydrate if you just wanted to make one single serving or one single drink or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna try that out. And before I get too carried away, I wanna remind you to take a minute to subscribe to Retired at 40, Live Life Simple, we do a video every single week, and if you subscribe, it's totally free, it's really fast. And then right next to that subscribe button, you can click the bell. That'll send you a notification every time a new video comes out. And that means every Sunday morning you get to join me in my freeze drying experiments. If you have freeze drying questions that you want answered, join the Facebook group, join the MeWe group. Those are our two social media groups. It's just Retired at 40's freeze drying group. You can use the magnifying glass on those uh, groups. That's the, the search function. You can search anything for, uh, from anything that's ever been posted on there. And if for some reason you can't find your answer, just post a question. We also do free giveaways, uh, multiple every month, and we're gonna have some big Big stuff coming up real soon that you're not going to want to miss out on. And last, if you're thinking about purchasing a freeze dryer like this, we ask that you consider using our affiliate link. It can be found down below in the description. Uh, it helps us with our Facebook giveaways. It, uh, it helps us develop new products for freeze drying and it helps us keep YouTube content coming your way every Sunday. Let's get to freeze drying. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised that this only took 32 hours and 43 minutes. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. And from what I can tell, very little foam up, which is usually a problem with uh, orange juice and sugary type things, but you can see the orange juice, there's actually no foam at all. And we're gonna take these upstairs and take a closer look at them. Our orange juice looks really, really nice. Same thing on the lemonade. Our fruit chunks of lemon and our fruit chunks of the orange. There's just our peel of the orange and our peel of the lemon. Orange zest did very nice, as did the lemon zest. And there are our lemon slices and our orange slices, but man, look at those. That's just a, that's a pretty picture there. And I'm gonna run both of these powders through a food processor to get a very fine powder, and then we're gonna figure out a formula on how to rehydrate these. So for the lemonade, the best mix that I have found, if you don't want it to be too lemony, is about a third cup of our powder and eight ounces or one cup of water. And then if you need to adjust your sweetness or your sourness of the lemon, um, then you would just change up your ratios of your water versus your powder or just add more stevia for sweetness. That's tasty. Need some ice. But what if it's cocktail hour? Add a little vodka and now you have a hard lemonade. I will say my recipe is pretty lemony because I like the lemon pulp and I like kind of the natural flavor of the lemon. If you like a sweeter lemonade, then you're gonna to wanna to use more than 12 teaspoons of stevia. Uh, stevia is a very potent sweetener, but uh, it's also easy to overdo the stevia. So if you wanna play it safe, you could always just add the stevia in afterwards as well. Our recipe that we did today should yield you eight cups of lemonade. I think on our OJ, our correct mixture should be about a half cup of powder and uh, one cup or eight ounces of water. That's pretty tasty. I wanna mention a couple things about the orange juice though. It's going to vary 
a whole lot just depending on your oranges, uh, just depending on how sweet they are. Some oranges are not sweet. This, uh, the oranges that I used for this were not very sweet. The other thing is orange powder and uh, somewhat the lemon powder. It tends to absorb the moisture in the air very, very quickly because it's pretty much like a sponge. You have to work quickly with it because it will want to absorb moisture very, very quickly. The last thing I wanna mention though, how cool is it that you can just have a glass of orange juice when you're camping or something like that? I'm really looking forward to that. And if you wanna make a screwdriver, just add uh, an ounce or two of vodka to that orange juice mixture. Next, I wanna check out this zest. This is the lemon zest. And then I also just wanna taste one of the ends of the lemons with the white stuff in there. I think you could powder on the lemons, I think you could powder the end and just uh, you could use that as a zest. You wouldn't even need to zest it. The zest surprisingly is less potent than the end or the, uh, the peel would be. So I think from now on going forward, I think I'm just gonna grind up the peels, throw those in a food processor. Let's see if that was the case with the oranges as well. I don't think the orange does as well as the lemon does. Um, you definitely get the zest flavor, but it just doesn't seem to have the same kick as fresh orange zest does, but I'll try it in some cooking and see, uh, I'll give you an update later on that. I wanna try just the raw fruit next. I think I'm gonna do the orange first because if I do the lemon first, I'm probably not gonna be able to taste the orange. Wow, the orange is very, very intense. And I know in the past we've kinda of discussed how uh, freeze drying actually intensifies flavor. Definitely the case with the orange. Let's see what it does for the lemon. Wow. Yeah, definitely the case for the lemon. <laughs> that is harsh. And we saved the best for last because it's five o'clock somewhere. So I'm gonna add some orange pieces and maybe a, a slice of orange and cover it up with this Blue Moon. One of my favorite beers and it goes really well with orange. All right, well today's experiment was a fun one and a good one. I, I learned a lot on this one. Everything ended up working really, really well, and I think there's actually a lot more uses than I originally started with uh, on this video. But I have learned that you have to work very fast because even these oranges right here, they've only been sitting out for, I don't know, 15 minutes, and they're starting to get a little bit spongy already. So if you're gonna use these, work quick. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did today. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. We'll catch you next week.